Krampus. All right. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Camilla. And it's Board Game Schmorgers Board, where we talk about board games and things related to board games and things Borger not related Schmorg, to board games. Borg, Borg, Schmorg, Borg, huh? the board games. Borg, 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 um, Hey, as don't forget, our tickets are running low on Dice Tower <gasps> East. Dice um, and the cruise is yeah. also going quicker than ever, so if you're coming Hello. to either of those things, think Dice Tower East first, because that's July, which is, I believe, three months from now. Yes. Less than three months. Wait, May, June. Yeah. Oh! It's going to be good, too. we got events this year. We've got a lot of good stuff happening. There is a I'm lot excited. going on. What are you most excited about? I want people to see my new dexterity games. I have all those new ones. Ooh, I, bought, I got yes. like 10 new ones or something. A big one. ones, Spin too. ball, the new spin ball that we just played in the uh, spectacular, Ooh, not a, a spectacular one, a marathon. Um, let's see. Someone wants to know what we're talking about. We're talking about Christmas and cockroaches. Oh. <laughs> That's for a reason. We'll, uh, we'll come back and circle around that a little bit later in this episode. Okay. <laughs> um, anyhow, another thing to mention, I want to mention, if you want to know what's going on at Dice Tower and things, check out Dice Tower Digest. It's a newsletter we send out every other week, just keeping you appraised of what is going on at the Dice Tower. All right, there was a lot of news, because we didn't do news last week because of the marathon. Right. Mm -hmm. So we got to catch up on this, so let's get to the news. <laughs> Right. First of all, um, if you didn't, if you're not on Facebook, because everyone who's a Facebook user shared this last week, SNL Saturday Night Live uh -huh. did a skit on Ticket to Ride. Well, using Ticket to Ride as a prop, they basically were Jumanjiing Ticket to Ride, and I won't ruin the rest of the skit. What does that for mean, Jumanjiing Ticket to Ride? That's that's the that's precisely the point of the skit. Was what does that mean? Do you know what Jumanji is? I do. I don't understand how that. Yeah, uh, you got to watch this kid. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it for you. Tell me about it. Um, I don't really watch SNL. By that I mean I don't. This watch is SNL. a this is a good skit. I, I thought it was. Pretty I thought it was good. very funny. It was yeah. very funny. I I am amused though, at the number of board gamers, who got into it, just kind of a, a upset because they're like, Tick to Ride is not six players. <laughs> a, oh really? Who cares? <laughs> and B. He, he says at the very beginning of the game, he's like, I've never played this game. So how would right. he know? Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah, there's six people sitting at the table, and that was the big stink uh, <laughs> of gamers everywhere. It's like, just be happy they featured Ticket to Ride. That's neat. That's right, really yeah, cool. exposure. Come on. Calm down, people. Alrighty. Let's talk about some games. Scrabble, a new version of Scrabble is coming yes. out. From what I understand, this is going to be on the other side of the board. I think the the new the regular version is on the one side. I think. Anyway, this is a new um, cooperative Scrabble, and um, right. you're gonna you have to put stuff next to the board, and you have these goals that you're trying to get to. Um, yes, it is a double sided board. So one side is a standard board, the other one is the new one. It has spaces, and you're trying to. You have to get these goal cards, uh, but you can also play competitively. The first person to get 20 challenges is the winner. And there's still most of the rules for Scrabble. Now, I think this is fantastic. I think mm -hmm. this is a good thing because why not? I mean, hey, if yeah. you do, if you're like, hey, they should mess with Scrabble. Well, guess what? You can still buy Scrabble. I do like that also. it is Scrabble on the one side. You can do that if you're yeah. if that's what you're into. And there's a little variant, kind of like another edition of the game on the other side. That's wonderful. Absolutely. Mm. There's different ways to play. I understand they made it kind of easier to approach this side. It's, you know, again, cooperative and the, the just the ease of entry has been lowered so that that competitive nature of the game Goes away a little bit. Great way to get into board gaming this way. It's really interesting, yeah. But the tiles, those tiles look plastic. They don't look wooden, yeah. It looks like a rendering, though, right? Not an yeah, actual. That's true so, too. I mean, who knows? Yeah, I just wonder if that's what it's going to look like because they would, you could still render the traditional scrabbled tiles of those true. little brown ones. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, this mm. is cool. All right, well, Steamboat Willie is now in public domain. What? So let's make some games about it. Mm -hmm. I would be very cautious to be the first publisher Oof. to do this, right? Because I don't want to be the one Disney talks to. I also think if you're going to use Steamboat Willie in a game, I'd prefer you to like, 
do it in a game that exists, like an unmatched deck for oh, Steamboat right. Willie. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. that's part of a game. This. Well, this looks like a whole mess. This looks like this the does, very definition this. of cash grab. There's yeah. three different fonts there, very quickly. Four, I'm sorry. I for, I didn't see the, the Simply, Simply Play, Play games. games. Is that the company? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> this looks awful. Yeah, I can't tell I don't that know anything it. about this, but if this is meant to be a promotional image that they put together... This looks like a, a passion project Kickstarter, but it's not a passion project. It's Steamboat Willie, and it's not a Kickstarter. Well, like, it you know is, what I mean? It is going to be crowdfunded in May. Oh, okay. All right. Um, they're going to return to the Forbidden Seas. Forbidden Seas? It says Dark Seas right there. Epic two to four player game. You need to rescue Caroline Epic. the cow. She needs to get aboard the steamboat to safety. Um, okay. So the way this works with IP is just because Steamboat Willie is public domain does not mean everything Mickey Mouse is. So they have to be very careful to use yeah. only stuff that was in that one short. That's right. Wow. Or other stuff that you make up. What is that thing at the front? Is that a goat? It's a yeah, goat. It's a goat. Oh, what is that? Look at a goat. It's, a goat. it's like a doggy looking goat. Well, that is a goat. Cute. I'm going to tell us a little goat here. Now, also, we have Steamboat Willy World, which is a terrible name for a company. They're making a, they're going to be a, running a Kickstarter for playing cards. Okay. This, I think, is better. That looks right? better. I mean, I, it yeah. certainly looks way better. But yeah. That's a cute art I, style. I really that looks like something. Like that. It's interesting, though. You notice in the background, they are not showing you anything that's not like that's not a face card. Right, right, yeah. Oh, and yeah. are all the cards going to be black and white? Because you cannot play cards if they're all the same color, I think. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, because you're also only seeing hearts, right? Those are hearts. They already should be I'm red. I'm assuming, so. though... Yeah, well, Mickey's the king. She's the queen. But I also see a... There's a Joker. The Joker parrot, and then I see Pete underneath there. Right. And po oh, and he's, he's a Jack. jack. Yeah. He's a Jack. You're right. We're, we're doing all kinds of math. Wow. That's interesting. Like, where's but the all why I show the one suit? Well, whatever. Yeah. All right, let's talk about other stuff that's not Mickey. Aww. Divine Right. This is a new edition. This game originally was published from TSR in 1979. Oh! That's before Steamboat Willie came out. <laughs> uh, and this is coming from Worthington Publishing. Uh, they're, they have a Euro game branch called Pungo Games. I don't know what that means. Pungo. Pungo. Pung, with pe pa, 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 pa. Yes. Or da, 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 da. Like, I don't know if it means they're puns or... When I hear pung, Pungo. I think pungent. Pung. But anyway, hmm. this says, Divine Right combines combat, diplomacy, and role-playing into two to six hours of fast-paced action. That's an oxymoron if I've Ooh, ever heard one. Six hours of fast pace. That is... But they're going to say, as age like a fine wine. Yeah, because I see it played all the time. But anyway, Divine Right keeps the 1970s look at the original while updating the component quality to the highest in the gaming industry. The highest? Oof. Ooh. Again, some of these statements, people really yeah. need to be careful with their copy because that's not going to be true. You're not updating this to the highest quality available across the board gaming industry. So let's take a look at Divine Right on Board Game Geek, 1979. Let's go. It's ranked 4,329, which very is not high. Actually, actually, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's okay. not too low. Maybe this game is far. <laughs> uh, I'm showing you the map here. It's a hex map. Oh. Oh, you can give Did someone you not a see the map? No, prize. I didn't. I didn't. Show her the map. I didn't know we were looking at the computer. What? Why? No. Oh, oh no. This was 79. That was fine back yes, then. No, well, this, is, this is 2024. I, I would have been about Steamboat. You know, I would have played this. <laughs> no. Back in the, yeah, when I was a kid, I would have been. I would have thought this was the coolest looking thing ever. The bees need. Really? Wait, this already launched on Kickstarter? Did we miss this? It's live right now. Uh, we'll be talking about this oh. coming week. Well, we'll talk about it then. Hey, We're look, done it's now. Not doing it's doing bad. all Has right. It, yeah, it's doing it's okay on well Kickstarter, funded. though. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, maybe I need to okay, get on this right. divine right. Nope. Uh, ride. All right. Well, you need the Shuppa. Pongo. Uh, hey. Anyway, the next game is called Shuppa oh, or like Shupa. Oh, it's like Candyland. Shupa. Is what it looks now, the designer of this, Adrian Dainu, the last game he designed is Northgard Uncharted Lands. So this yes. looks very different than that. He's done very few games, actually. He's done North that, that one, the Northlands game. 
And there might have been another game in there, but then you have to jump back quite a bit in time because he did that one game called Moai. Oh, really? Forever ago. Mm. Which was like this really mean Euro game. Um, and this, now the Shupa game. This cover almost looks generated. Yeah, it looks a little weird. It does, yeah. I can't. Anyway, just your revealing it cards. It's simultaneously busy but bland. Yeah. You know? You're going to get a hand of seven number cards that come in four colors and two action Shoot cards. You're going to get cards laid out in a row. You'll reveal them. You're choosing and revealing a card, and it looks like you're. It looks like maybe a little auction style with the cards. I don't know. We'll what about see the candy? What about the candy? Now you're just trying to win candy in the game cards. Now you want to see a good-looking candy game. Look at this next yes, one, please. called Rolling in Wonderland. So. <laughs> I think that box looks really cool. Now, this is another Alice in Wonderland type game. Rolling this is also coming plan. to crowdfunding later on. And you will stumble in that Wonderland and meet all the famous characters. She kind of looks like Paper Mario. Like she's yeah, very flat, you're right? right. I will tell you, if there's one theme I am way, way over, it is Alice in Wonderland stuff. Really? I'm so over. Like, it's the Cheshire Cat again. I know the Mad Hatter. <laughs> Like so over that theme, and they put it in every there's other. There's way game. less than that. Yeah. There's a Cthulhu. Oh, absolutely, but I just I don't For like this yeah, one that's as just much. One that you yeah. don't resonate with. I like it. This, yeah. looks, this looks fun. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. All right. Next we have House of a Thousand Corpses. Let's go. We talked about we the, oh, crowd it surfing in yeah. crowd surfing. That's what it was. House of a Thousand Corpses. This is uh, well, it's coming out in quarter four of this year. Okay. Um, I made the mistake, because we were talking about this in the studio, I made the mistake of hunting down and watching part you of this did. movie. What? Hey, with well, your kids? No. Oh. And I was out, like... It's the same plot as Chainsaw Massacre! You are watching this for the plot? <laughs> <laughs> that might have been your first mistake. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't like any of Is it. Is this cooperative? I feel like we said uh, it was. When we were on the Kickstarter, we talked about it being cooperative. Yeah. yeah, you're playing as the the bad guys, you know, trying to... The killers or yeah, whatever. The yeah, killers. Yeah, this is interesting. This is, of, of all the uh, themed Trick or Treat Studios games that have come out recently, based on some uh, intellectual property, I've never seen this movie, but this is one I'm, I'm interested in trying the game. Yeah. Hey, this is cool. All right, Knights of the Round Table. This is coming from Crafty Games. And Crafty doesn't make too many board games, yeah. actually. The designer is Johnny Pack. So that's interesting. Oh. You're going to be, each game that you play, you're going to pick a cycle of Arthurian myth to play, which sets the tone and starting rules. Okay, cool. And then you're going to deploy these different knights to construct Camelot, repel invader hordes, and quest for the Holy Grail. Um... You unlock different narratives and modules until you find the grail, and then the winner is crowned High King. Dozens of silk screened wood pieces, a huge game board, a 3D castle that you build during gameplay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything it's saying is like, yeah. Yeah. I usually like Johnny Pack um, you know, we, as a developer more, but yeah. You know, we talk about overused themes. It's weird to me that there's not more themes on the Knights of the Round Table. Yeah, there's not that many. Mm hmm. And it's like, that's. Especially Great public you, domain. You could totally drop Alice in Wonderland in the middle of that, too. You could. It's also a great cover. That I like that guy at the top walking into the grail image. I don't like oh, the two. Uh, yeah, I don't like yeah. the two parts. I really like the top. I think the, the bottom part's okay, but the two just don't go together well for no, me. No, I, I like I, it. I don't Tom, like I'm with it. you. That's a good looking image. Mm. I think the title breaks them up okay. Maybe that's the problem. I, I, I don't know. I, I, why, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't like it. I think I it like looks them great. individually, but not together. All right, Rebel Princess. This is a trick-taking game that uh, no, was already game. released, but it's uh, at Essen, and it's coming to uh, English-speaking countries from Bezier Games. I have not played as of you, and on my cast. Yes, we played a little bit of it. That's right. Did uh, you like it? Yeah, it's based on a uh, traditional trick-taking card game. I forget which Hearts, one right now. It says. Okay, so it's based on hearts. Oh, with special powers? With special powers, right. Um, very attractive, very well illustrated, you know, good-looking little card game. But it is, it feels traditional mm. with a little spice on top of that. 
absolutely something that many people can can play, and I'm glad to see it get a wider distribution. All right, in the category of who asked for this, <laughs> um, CGE is publishing Little Alchemists. So if you ever were playing Alchemist oh. and said, man, I wish my kids could play this, well, now you have a version of that coming out. Um, now, part of this is because the designer of the game became a father in the 10 years since he's designed this, so yes, this is That's the 10th anniversary. Cool, okay. A stepping stone for it? It's interesting you say a stepping stone for it, and I think Alchemists hasn't aged particularly well. Okay, interesting. Because it was when it came out, we're like, oh my word, it was one of the first games ever to use an app, and it did so in a pretty decent way. Yes. And it was like, ooh, deduction, using an app, that's fantastic. And then there was this worker placement game that actually was bigger than the deduction part, and so I was like, it's good. I like the deduction part the best, but there's also worker placement, fine. Now there's so many games out there that do deduction with apps and stuff like that, that I would never play Alchemist. I would just play any one of the other ones. Interesting. Like the Search for Planet X or something. Yeah. All those games do that better. I mean, I still give props to Alchemist because they kind of brought that app to the thing. It's just I don't know that I'd go back and play it. Yeah, I never did play this one, but I heard it was a pretty long game, too. Yeah, Don't it's like a that. full Euro with deduction elements in it. Mm. Maybe Little Alchemists is, is my version of Alchemist, then. I don't know. I was wondering I about that. I do wonder how young it'll trend, you know? It's going to be at Gen Con, so we'll find out there. Um, and it says 7 and up. Okay, that's cool. So maybe still has enough depth in the gameplay. To feel well, like I'm going to play. Yeah, I'm going to try yeah, it out. Sure. I think it'll be fun to play with you know my my son and stuff. But I don't. I, the only thing is, I don't think of them like, oh, you like that? Now let's play Alchemist. I'll be like, oh, you like that? Let's play Search for Planet X. Sure. That no, but even myself, like I'd be like, oh, let's start with Little Alchemist, and then yeah. I'll go. You know, I can see myself starting. I want, I want to play the new one. Yeah, yeah like I want to play Bot Factory, and then go learn Kanban AV. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. And obviously, this is not the same, but like, yeah, the same feeling. All right, Cosmos has a new game coming out called mm. The Gang, as Germany continues their rush to find the most generic names for games. Um, this is the cooperative poker game. Not the first, because that would be Surfacers oh. Max. Um, but it's, it's from the brands. And the brands said they think it will get the Spielsjahres nomination. This is from the... The brands? What brands? do you mean by that? Um, uh, it's from uh, Inca and Marcus Brand. Or no, maybe they didn't design it. Maybe they said that about it. Sorry, oh, the designers okay, are yeah. John, John w. Cooper, Cooper and Corey, Corey Heath. Heath. The yeah. brands played it and said they think it will get the Spiel des Jahres. Oh, okay, got it, got okay, it. Okay, interesting. That well, makes Corey more sense. Corey Heath is the designer of Zendo, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. And a few other things, but... And John Cooper's the guy who jumped out of the plane with all the yeah, money. Yeah, D.B. Yeah, D.B. Cooper. He goes by John, but... <laughs> Your real name's D.B. Cooper. Um, yeah, this looks boring, but I'm sure it's an interesting game. <laughs> hey, if the brands like it, I, I'm in. They know what's up. All right, Caesar and Cleopatra is coming back. This, this is a piece of news I was not expected to hear anytime soon. Really? I figured they were going to redo all of them. Yeah. The whole line. This is, this so this is from the nowhere. Cosmos two-player line, which... A lot of people know Lost Cities is the most famous game for that line, oh. Balloon Cup. And a lot of those games were reprinted. The most popular two being Lost Cities, which was reprinted straight. And then, um, uh, which one was reprinted as uh, Thunder and Lightning? Heron Zeus. Heron Zeus was reprinted as Thunder and Lightning. Yes. Anyway, it's a great series. This one is being reprinted from Cosmos themselves, although this rendering makes it look Bigger, I'm assuming it's still going to be in that. I, I it's assume it's still box. a small square box, yeah. Mm. I like Caesar and Cleopatra. I didn't play it very often with people because <laughs> there are some... Why? <laughs> Why did you play it? Was there some sort <laughs> of objectionable card in yeah, it? Yeah, there was an objectionable card. It was like, well, this is what Romans did. I was like, great, but I'm trying to play this game with my wife. <laughs> you know? I'm out of it, okay? I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you later. later. I don't want to, like, this is a family-friendly show, but... I, the oh. card itself was just a mechanism. Yes. And so I would assume that that's not a... You I, think it's out? It blew my mind when I first opened the box. I was like, wait, what's like, this oh, game about? Wow. Um, the artwork is fully worked, uh, reworked. And the original game, I do not think, was a looker by any stretch of the imagination. No. Uh, and so this looks much more modern. Yeah. Hopefully it is... 
yeah, it's a nicely reworked, maybe slightly updated version of the game. I'm interested. I'm interested. It's been a long time since I played the original game. I don't remember being blown away by it. I don't think I was blown away by it either. It. But it was a nice back and forth yeah. area control where you're trying to control different groups of people in the middle. Hmm. Yeah. All right, continue on from Cosmos. We have Monkey Fun. Monkey Fun? That's uh, claim a connected oh. area as quickly with your gang of monkeys. Oh That's my cute. goodness, all the monkeys. I do like that cover a lot. What's up with that monkey right there? Then we have, from Friedman Freeze, we have Fishing. Because um, all the game starts with F. Now this, oh, it's actually, in America, it's going to be called Fishing. Uh. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So this one's a trick-taking game, I believe. Yeah, eight rounds. And you can upgrade the deck of cards while you're playing the game. So after a hand, some new cards will make their way in to the deck you're playing with. So it takes some of the ideas that he's put in his little fast-forward series and implements them into a game that isn't that linear. It I sounds like interesting. Sort of yeah, it sounds interesting. He tends to do... I tend to like his small card games more than his big games, actually. And this, I think, is supposed to be a small I thought you one. didn't like the Fast Forward series that much. I don't like him very much. No, I liked one of them, I think, okay. but I really like him. When I think of his games, I tend to like the smaller ones more than the big ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. they go, he, he goes very mechanical when it's big, and it gets a little more dry. His small ones uh, are a little more interesting to me. All right, a, a cool cover here, Babylon. This is coming from Geek Attitude Games. Oh, wow. Wow, that's... That cover is really neat. What um, is that board? It's a really board unique board. The board is cool looking. I, I, I worry looking at that board that the game is really basic really and simple. Really abstract also. Um, yeah. We Maybe. played that game Skylines or Sky... I forget. I asked Mike the, yesterday. The one that had, the little, that had the little towers that connected the... And you were building oh, no. paths from tower to tower? No, that's something else. No, yeah, Skyline, was... maybe. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of that. I mean, again, it's work in progress, so maybe the whole thing looks better and cooler. Um, this is a two to four player game. And you are digging the quarry for the best materials and then using them to build your three dimensional gardens. And Cloud hmm. City, says Mike. Yes, yeah, Cloud City, thank you. Yeah, I don't know, but if this is your own thing that you have in front of you and each person has their own, that's kind of really Ooh. cool. It's a table hog. It looks really neat, though, and I love that cover. Yeah, it is I a great really cover. I really like that a lot. It looks cool. All right. So there's a new game that's been sort of announced here called Black Forest. This is coming from Fjordland Spiel, and they're saying it's a successor to Glass Road from Uwe Rosenberg. But this is not Uwe Rosenberg. This is from uh, Tido Lorenz. He worked with Rosenberg on the Fields of Arl expansion. Oh, okay. I love that. It sounds like we're talking about famous, you know, scientists. Well, he was in the room when they discovered the formula. So. <laughs> yeah. This looks way bigger than Glass Road. Glass Road is not that big of a game compared to Uwe's other games. I'm kind of excited about this, even though it's not a Rosenberg game. It 100% looks like one. Um, is that like a Rondell there? or a? Yeah. Probably. That, Rosenberg in a lot of his games uses those... It, it's a way to keep track of how many resources you have of each thing. And you move them around. That's the way it's been in okay. several games, including Glass Road. Mm. You'd love it. I don't love Glass Road. I think Glass Road is okay. But maybe more... I, I like Rosenberg's big games, usually. So. Huh. It's been a while since I played a Rosenberg big game. Hey, we're back to Friedman Freeze. Hello. Mm. He made a game called Free Ride, and now Free Ride USA is coming out. And you can tell it's the USA because it says USA on it. But also you can see, if you look well in the window of that train, that dude's eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a fatty. <laughs> okay. That would be great if there was like right. a big fat guy in those trees <laughs> eating a whole pizza. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Come on now. You I know, would laugh. Oh, that'd be great. Anyway, um, uh, this is a spinoff. I have not, actually. It's a spinoff that has the same gameplay as Free Ride. So, you're building roots and decks and a bunch of different things. I saw a picture of the map. It looked pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of Friedman Fries's most famous games does have a map with connections, right? I mean, Power Grid kind of yeah. looks like a train game. It's not a train game. It kind of looks like one. So, 
I'm interested in this one. This is a, I'm assuming, a little bit of a bigger game that I am interested in from Friedman Freeze. All right. Check Games is coming out. I'm very excited about this one. SETI. Uh, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Okay, interesting. This is from Tomas Holek. Now, this is interesting because it almost looks like they're doing a similar, very similar theme to the one that is coming out from Bezier, but it, is it Bezier Games, I think? He was, oh, which the, one? Yeah. the search for ETI, I oh, think, or whatever it was. Not yeah, yeah. UFO. Not UFO. Yeah, not, UFO's yeah. out. Now we have a new abbreviation. Whatever for that, the new yeah. UFO. All right, so yeah. this looks this looks good. I, I like CG games generally. Mm -hmm. um, or they, they they're like I think CG pushes the bounds more than most companies. They they'll say, Oh, let's try this new thing, and sometimes it doesn't work for me. Like that deal with the devil did not work right. for me, but they definitely tried. They do try right. weird stuff. Weird they, and unique. Yeah, they were so. they were putting out the app games a long time ago they tried the app, you know, Frontier. Yeah. They do try weird stuff, and I do uh, applaud that. This looks very cool, and I love that theme. Who's this reminds me, this look makes designer. me think of Search for Planet X a little bit. It's kind of what it looks like a bit. But it, it, the board's got some spinning action on it. It looks like its own thing, and I really uh, i am intrigued by it. All right, so the designer is Tomas Holek, and the only game, other game he's designed is his Galileo Galilei, which oh, I'm excited about, yeah, but, but we, we haven't got yet. Yeah, okay. So okay, that's coming from that company, familiar. Pink Troubadour. Yeah, because that hasn't delivered yet, has it? Very nice. I don't think I don't so. I believe so. I'm not seeing it. Uh, you're investing that's in cool. equipment to analyze stuff that comes in. There's 200 cards in the game, and every card is unique. Yeah, I feel like there's wow. a lot more going on than what we're seeing here in this picture, right? I mean, this is yeah. just the... I think this is their big game that's coming out at Essen. Okay. So. I am excited that's for this cool. one. I'm yeah. normally not excited for CG releases. This one is talking to me. Great yeah, yeah. cover. Oh, so such a good. good cover. Man, we're going to have yeah. a hard time at the end of this year doing that vote on best covers. It's going to be an interesting... Yeah, I love that. I like that one a lot. All right, let's reel in your bus covers. Now back to bus and stop. Tokyo oh, Game Market is happening, true. well, next week, actually. Or, well, 11 days or something like that. Anyway, this is a new game from Sashi and Sashi. And um, you need to be efficient bus drivers. They love buses over there. I love their, their art style. All their games have the same illustrator. They always yeah. have this sort of timeless look. You can't quite tell when, this, when their games are set. So I think they all. Yeah. Okay. That's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like you can't you tell. Where. Like is this is from 1950s. Supposed to be like look people from 1950s or or 20s. 1920s or, yeah. or yeah. I could see that. Yeah. So I like that clean look to it all. Very stylized, and I it tend to like stylized, their games. Yeah. So I'm excited for this one. This will be generally released in June, but you'll be able to pre-order it in May. All right. Dying message. Now, this is, has 50 copies coming out at the... At, oh, no, this came out... What? Sorry, last year with only 50 copies in December oh. 23rd, 23. But Oink is now going to be publishing this game. And in it, you've been murdered. Hmm. But you're not quite dead. Um, that's not how what? being murdered works. No, that's no, not no, you, no. Like you're actively bleeding out. Yeah. And so you are trying to point... Use these cards yeah. to right. give people clues... Write a message ...as to blood. what... Oh, so it's what like that one it? scene from the... Many uh, movies. Yeah, what's like that, almost. What's that famous novel that they made into a movie uh, with Tom Hanks? The Dan... Oh, the Da Vinci Code? Yeah. It's like that one scene in the Da Vinci Code. The yeah. beginning of that movie, the guy's like, Bleh. let me draw you some... Let me write out a whole paragraph. <laughs> to whom it may concern. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That'd be funny if that two would make it there and then die. Like, ah, come on! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, if the clues are easy to understand, they'll be destroyed by the culprit. If they're difficult, they won't be communicated to anyone. So your culprit, I guess, will mess up part of it. Um, okay. This is a, the exact same premise as another party game, which I forget the name of, that had a big Where's Waldo map. Uh huh. And there was one, like, you would pick someone who killed you. And then you would do the same thing. You'd write clues, but the person who killed you would be erasing some of your clues. Oh, <laughs> I love that. interesting. Yeah, so you have a big, you have this big grid, and the, the, let's say the the. Oh wait, is that the yellow game from Yellow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I played like that. Like you can even draw a picture, 
but if it's too obvious, then you just erase it. So I would draw the picture that would cover four squares, but they might erase yeah. two of them. And it's it's a pretty it's okay. interesting game. It's okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. This seems a little bit seems almost the exact same style, but more streamlined as an oink game is going to be. Small little game. Huh. Oink is also making cool. Zuli. And um, wait, is this oink? Because it definitely looks like. Yeah, it oink. looks like oink, but. Hmm. I don't know. Now I'm wondering, it might not be Oink. Nope, it's publishing brand Unfringed. But that looks oh, so much like an Oink game. It does, wow. yeah, yeah. Designer Chris Priscott. This was crowdfunded in 2021. Oh. Um, oh, it's Moving Wild, I guess is the name of it. Okay. It's based on Zuli, sorry. So that top left cover is what That's it used the to be. One. The middle one is what it is now. Mm. So you're making enclosures, putting animals in them, and you have to have special things. Three rounds, most points wins. It hmm. looks real kitty. It I is an oink release, kid. says Mike. Okay. okay. Oh, I see. It was originally unfringed. And oink now is, it's oink. Oh, it's the last two or okay. one's okay. oink picked okay. up. Okay. <clears throat> then we have a new game from Toshiki Sato who designed a game called Happy City. Now he has Merchants of the Sky Islands. And it's one of those ones where that cover and that game feel like they're two different wow. things. Wow, that game yeah, board, the is, board is... That board is... That scoring board is straight up Carcassonne. Oh, yeah, you're right. Ooh. That is Carcassonne. Is it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You about to get sued. Yeah, it looks just like a Carcassonne board. Um, well, you know what? I might play that way because they're putting tiles out and connecting know, things. And making it, yeah. it says you, on your turn, add a tile from your hand to the table. Matching land and sky. Gain the appropriate resource or victory points based on the color of the airship on the tile you place. Well, there's differences there. Okay, but okay, what about the farmers? <laughs> do you lay down the farmers? How do the farmers score? <laughs> All right. That looks cute. Let's go back to cool covers here with Rebirth. Um, Rebirth is coming from Mighty Boards, and it is a Reiner Knizia tile laying game. Oh, Where's Mike? Yeah. Where's Mike Delisio? He's popping in oh. the chat now. This is a brand new Knizia, too, from what I understand. A new tile laying oh. game. Okay. Like, not based on anything, not based, like anything okay. known, I well, suppose. Right. Uh, and I had not seen anything past the cover, so there's a little tantalizing image there. It it's looks set nice. in the future. The lush and hopeful future. It's also been described as a bit of a cozy game, which is interesting because oh, that seems to be okay. the new push. So that's a little hmm. bit of what I saw online. It's like, yeah, it's kind of a cozy rebuilding game from Knizia. And I'm like, okay. Interesting. Okay. The it looks like there's a Zeppelin the in the background. <laughs> Mike says the Reiner Sons continues. The Reiner. Oh, wow. How many Renaissances can you have? You got the trick taking Renaissance. That's a thing. This is a Reiner Sons. That's and different. now the Reiner Sons? Different. All right, Brazilian publisher Paper Games started a small line of micro games from Kinesia. You know who does our news, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, in 2023, <laughs> the top three came out, and then the yep. new ones are coming out here. And they, well, actually, they came out in December and January. Cool. So we have Glyphos, that's a one to five memory game, and Glitches, a card placement game that's similar to. Robo Master from Cocktail Games, and Procurados, a two six player game in which you test your bounty hunting skills to find the right rats that are running wild in the West. Wild West rats, got it. It's the wild, wild rats. Wild, wild rats. I did play, That's funny. Mike has these top three because, of course, he does. Uh, uh, oh, there he is. He's shouting it. Z play Duo Ragnar. <laughs> oh, my hey, gosh. people shout in chat, Roy. We need to uh, yeah. put them in timeout. No all caps. Uh, anyway, anyway, I played that one with Mike, and it was okay for. It was all right for what it is, which is an incredibly small micro game. They're not kidding; these are tiny little things. Oh, okay. So. Are they all trick taking? No, no, no. Mm. The one I played wasn't a trick taking game, mm. and none of these sound like trick taking games. But anyway, yeah, it's like a line of Knizia games. They're all his, I think, and they're all tiny, which is crazy to me. That he's still coming out with this many tiny games. Like, right. Yeah. It's insane. Now, obviously, they're going to have some similarities to some of his other games because when you've made 
400 games or whatever, yeah. Right. But the one I played was all right. But we're not done with Canizia news. Hit him wow. with more Canizia. What? So there's a new version of At the Office, which we actually have here at, at the office. Um, I haven't played the game because I don't think it has English rules in it. Plus, it looks like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, it's a roll and write game. So the Polish company is reprinting it as Ingsoc 1984. Oh, it's the same game? Yeah. Oh. oh, that one looks way better. In the first one, you were trying to become boss of the year. Here, you are trying to... What's in the office? I don't think Organize I've seen new one. recruits for a political party. There's some little game back there. How big is it? I've not even seen it. Okay. Anyway, huh. so the uh, the publisher's words here: make a good team, or you will be vaporized. The great brother <laughs> watches you. Oh, I like that. That's pretty cool. More Canadia. All right, that's that's enough wow. for the writer songs. They're bringing back Fitz. Let's go. Fitz is great. Fitz is okay. No, Fitz is good. Fitz is fine. You like Fitz best. better or Bits better? <laughs> is it Tetris? Bits sucks. It looks like Tetris. Okay, Fitz is you better than Bits. Bits sucked. Fitz is better than Bits. Yeah, I agree, but I don't think Bits sucks. I don't. This is a Tetris-style game from okay, Reiner Canizia, so um, which is fine, but they're reprinting it. They really are huh. reprinting a lot of Canizias because they just reprinted uh, or announced uh, that other one that now has a flower theme and you connect lines through it. I don't know. They, they, they've reprinted. Which they're, one? They're, I forgot what it's called originally. I used to have the original printing. They're just reprinting all his stuff. It kind of is a Reiner Sons. Wow. And I kind of hate oh, Mike for that. Oh, wow. This Put is. Got in your head. See, there are two different versions. The top one's a Chinese version, and the bottom one's the Korean one, which looks. Way better. better. Oh, like it's not I even see. close yeah, there. No. Yeah, Butterfly Garden, which was not Rondo. It was um, something else, Middle Eastern or Indian or something like that. Huh. Good news. We're done with Canizia. Aww. All right. There's an expansion coming out yes. for Earth called Abundance. Yeah, but the expansion was designed by Canizia. <laughs> it was no. not. We will be playing this expansion. It's coming Tuesday, so yeah. join us. As we play Earth yeah. with Abundance. Yeah, Indigo was the yeah, original. Yeah, exciting. Okay. I'm excited about that. Speaking of expansions, we have Carnival Chaos, an expansion for Thunder Road. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that one, and just basically it's it's the Mario Kart Arena, mm -hmm. except uh, a lot more death. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Kart Arena, okay. Then Dominion continues making second editions of everything, so they made one of Cornucopia and Guilds. I'm assuming together. Right? Two things by this: one that they're that Dominion used to make small box expansions. They stopped. I think these might be the last two. So now oh, they're okay. combining them in big boxes, and also it really feels like they're pretending Alchemy never happened. Dude, they haven't reprinted that. They have right? not done a second edition of Alchemy. Yeah, that's out. So, and if you don't, if you just want the new cards, you will you can buy them separately. Okay. I, bought, I just bought one of these boxes. It just comes with all the new stuff, and that's fine. Cool, cool. All right. Oh, you lied. Oh. We're back to Canizia again. Psych! Oh. The Reiner songs continues. So there's a new expansion for Millie Fury, the masterpiece. <laughs> oh, I'm allergic to Canizia. So, um, this is, well, so there's an expansion coming out for this. That's cool. But what's really interesting about this, and we didn't put a slide in here, um, but this is a coming from Devere, and they're doing a P500, or they're calling it Devere 500. Sure. So this has not. So do you know the you P500? Know what it is? No, I don't know what you're talking about. So games, uh, GMT, the war game company. This was before Kickstarter. They did something called the P500, which said we want to make this game. Uh huh. You need to pay us to make this game, or give us your credit card, and when we get 500 orders, then oh, we'll print okay. it. But we will then charge your credit. They don't. They didn't charge your credit cards until they got enough. Then one day you'd just be like, "Oh, my credit card was charged." Oh, so what it's happened? Kickstarter and all on Kickstarter. It, it was, was a pre-order system that wouldn't trip and trigger yeah, unless you until enough people hit a threshold. So the P500 okay. was like you'd sign up for a game, yeah. and eventually it could be years too. You could be like, "I'm interested in this," and then two years later. They got 500 and hit print. They, they still do okay, it. Interesting. They still do it, yeah. And, and not only that, it might not even be 500. They might be like, all right, let's see if we can get to 1,000. Ah, we're at 1,200. That's good enough. Let's print it. And then they print it and print a whole bunch of extras and sell the extras. Okay, interesting. So that's what Devere is doing with this. So 
At this time, it says there's 454 reservations. I bet. I bet. Uh, I can't pull it up. I bet by now it's over. I bet it's over 500. So the DeVere 500 page, this is the only project on it right now. Yep, 518. Okay. So it's going to happen now for 24 bucks. I'm oh, curious cool. what made him choose to go this route. But hey, if it it's works, a that's safer cool. bet for an expansion, I will say. Yeah, but why do that say over Kickstarter? Tavira has never a done a whole lot less work to like run a Kickstarter, to prep the Kickstarter, to watch the. I mean, if you're in a Kickstarter, the office, I mean, I think we like shut down for that month almost. You know, I mean, not obviously we're still doing videos and that kind of stuff, but it's like nothing else, all hands on deck. So for a company that's putting into that, monitoring the chat, coming up, chat, coming up the graphics, coming up, and if you do that too, you're gonna have to have stretch goals. Maybe they don't want stretch goals. It's like. This is the expansion we have. We're ready. Yeah. Just help us print. So I think, I think it's much better decision. They know the game. They know what they have. They just need kind of this enough interest to actually have the faith to hit the print button. I think this is a much smarter way. Yeah. I think for an expansion, this is the way to go, actually. Absolutely. I agree. Speaking of expansions, there's a new expansion coming for Gaia Project called The Lost Fleet. Oh, is that a Fury truck? Land. That looks straight up like a truck. <laughs> it does. <laughs> well, that's why I got lost. Because it's in space it's and it should be on the highway somewhere. And you'll be oh, able to cool. see the rulebook online. It's coming in quarter three, so Essen. All right. Asmode has a little game called Star Wars Bounty Hunters. Um, this is a kind of a... Um, you're picking a card... On different piles, and you're going to play or sell a card, and you pass your hands. So there's a drafting game involved here. 20 minutes, short little game. Hmm. It's from their new Zygomatic Studio, which is their light little games. I wonder if this is based on something. You know, I went and looked at it because I thought so too, but I can't find that it is. Okay. Richard, I, I have the same thought as Richard here. I was like, it kind of looks like Unmatched. Just looking at that, that um, cover real quick. I immediately thought unmatched. This cover? The cover, yeah, oh. with the little the Star I also Wars thought up unmatched the top. When I first saw the cover until yeah, I saw it has this. The stuff. Until you actually see the stuff yeah, yeah, down yeah. there, it was like, oh, is this an unmatched? Oh no, it's not. But then that interesting. That would be full circle if they did that. But then interesting color choice, going like pastel for a Star Wars game. I think it's, it's it looks unique in a very not overdone, but in a prolific theme. All right, we have a lot of thumbs down today. All right, anyway, Risafa. This is coming from Vladimir Suki uh, from Delicious Games. This is their Essen game that they're coming out with. Ooh. And that looks like the very definition of a Euro-style game. Oh, my little, word. This one looks a little more interesting to me than his science fiction game Evacuation did last year. Oh, and really? I like science fiction more than I like these kinds of themes. But this one looks a little better to me. I like the layout of that board. Oh, okay. I'm liking what's going on. Anyway, here. you are going to the city, Risafa, which has no water. Oof. So they had to bring water in. And water tanks and canals to bring the water in. And so that's kind of the whole point of this, is getting water to the city. All right. Wow. All right, Dino... Um, which is a company that people haven't heard of too much. Last year, they published a game called Aldebaran Duel, which was from well, from Suki. Okay. I, I reviewed it. It was okay. Okay. Uh, but they have a new League of Six. Like they're bringing back League they of Six? They are bringing back League of Six. Wow. Those are not great covers. That's also bad. But still better than the first oh, really? <laughs> League of Six cover. Are they, are they dwarves? <laughs> or just short? Well, actually, no. All joking aside, in the Middle Ages, people were shorter because of well, lack yeah. of calcium and other things. It well, just it's evolution. I mean, people are getting taller. That's awesome. Yeah, Tom, you're living in the future, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Whew, there's a lot of news. We're almost done, folks. All right. I'm excited about this next cover. Don't starve the board game. So this is based. This is cool. Yeah. This, this is, is based really cool. on a Steam game that I had not heard of. It's from Glass Cannon, by the way. I went and looked at this game, and then I was tempted to go play the game. It's one of those go around and collect resources and get better and survive. Mm -hmm. uh, a cozy game, except that there's like monsters no, no, everywhere. No, it's definitely not a cozy game. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I don't know what you call those, right? Survive, like it's, it's, a, it's a survival it's a game. Yeah. Survival game. Yeah. Does Minecraft then survival or cozy? You could play. There's a there's a mode for survival. Yeah, and it's called survival. Oh. Yeah, good point. <laughs> anyway, no, it this is. is. I've played this. It's a it's a very cool, very stylized little game. You try to survive. Obviously, that's the idea. And eventually, you die and then start another run. It's very, very popular. Oh, it's just, roguelike. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I also like so Glass I'm really, Cannon. I'm really excited for this one just because I really like the look. I like the game. It's not one I'm like over the moon about the video game, but I've played it and I'm, I, I've enjoyed it and I love the look. Yeah, it's funny because I'm not interested in this partially because one of my least favorite mechanisms in any game is feed your people. Yeah, and that's the game. The game of it, yeah. So, alrighty, and then we have <laughs> this cracks me up. So a game called Nature. This is from Nature. Dominic Crapuchettes from North Star Games. It is in the vein of their evolution games. It's an evolution of evolution. They actually use that term. Um, so I don't know exactly what. It just cracks me up because when a game is called Nature, that means we are completely running out of Nature games <laughs> names. I mean, it's all, we also had like Earth, though. I mean, I think we're. I, think I didn't think seeing, Earth was a great name either. We're, we're seeing that trend to go just like one word kind of. Sure. Um, all-encompassing oh, titles. It's such a dull name. But that's a cool cover. Nice color palette there, fading the colors. I like that yeah, a lot. interesting, again, with the pastels. Interesting color choices. Yeah. And it's going to have... Here's the thing, though. This game's going to have five modules. Jurassic Ooh. Flight, Natural Disasters, Arctic, Arctic Tundra, and Amazon Rainforest. And you can use zero to three of them in a game to modify the length and complexity. Interesting. Huh. So, like... If you add one to the game, the game's 60 minutes. And he says it's the same complexity as Evolution. Okay. If you add two, it's 90 minutes, and it's the same as Climate. I haven't played Climate. Uh -huh. Have you? Yes. Is it more complex than Evolution? Yeah, slightly. And then he says you add three, you get 120 minutes. That's roughly the complexity of Terraforming Mars. And I want to point out that Evolution and Terraforming Mars is a pretty wide barrier yes, between right, us. Right, so. right, Huh. We'll okay, see. that's a cool yeah. idea. I like that idea. I'm yeah. very interested. And then our last piece of news, and the only news you should care about, DC Heroes uh, United has been announced. Uh, ah! Nobody, really. I mean, because we all assumed this was coming. Oh, yeah. But still, I'm excited. Of course, they are not saying if it's compatible with Marvel, but we'll just assume it is. I don't think they is. can They will not say, say that, that right? yes. Yeah. I believe they they can't. Because we I, saw that with uh, mo uh, the Zombicide ones as well. Sure, sure. You know, they can't they, really they, say yeah. these things. Um, but it's one of the few times I like doing anachronistic stuff, like with superheroes, like how would Superman fare against Apocalypse? Oh, yeah. I like that sort oh, of thing. Yeah, that's or cool, yeah, Peter yeah. Parker against the Joker. That sort of thing is interesting yeah. to me. I don't yeah. have a problem with crossing those streams. Um if it's DC and Marvel and whatever, like, like superhero stuff. It's all fantasy anyway. Yeah, like, you I don't know. have a problem yeah. with that. It's also not fantasy, by the way. Shut your mouth, okay? Superheroes are important and serious. All right. <laughs> okay. They definitely didn't fool around with the heroes they put in the main box, as Mike points out, though. They got like, Superman, yeah. Batman, Wonder Woman. We Which know is you're nice here. to see, though, instead of, like, sprinkled out throughout, so then you have that... I have to get everything. I don't want everything. I can't store everything. Fine, I get nothing. I want you know, to call what I... They're going to have a Green Lantern box. Yes. They're going to have an Arkham box, for sure. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, I mean, because Batman's villains itself. They it's just, just too did, big. Yeah, they they're going to do the a sinister... DC Batman I'm assuming they're doing like yeah. a Sinister Six-type box with Arkham... Oh. Type guys. I am surprised they didn't do just kind of like the Spider Geddon, just like you were saying, do like an Arkham or just a they, Batman they will box. Do you know, that like as an just add -on, that, probably. Yeah. Just that. They'll do yeah. a Flash box. I don't know about that one. Teen okay. Titans. Yeah, that's a good call. Teen Titans. Um, Constantine and the is that like Dark? Yeah, dark, the Magic DC, people. Dark, whatever. I think they might save that for like the future. Like you'll see the the DC. Uh, whatever. What's the universe where everything went bad? Where Superman killed the Joker? Um, I've been just reading it. Oh, uh, anyway, it's mm -hmm. a it's a great series. Oh, Mike says Aquaman box. Yeah, I disagree with Mike on that one. Mike uh, says Aquaman box. I'm like, nah. He says because of the movies. I don't think so. I think Aquaman will be in the game, but uh, list I think some he'll be, yeah. list some Aquaman stuff besides Aquaman. Just yeah. Fish, 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 fish. Yeah. I know Black Manta and. Well, Pete Sherry's in the comments. Be careful of besmirching fish. Okay. Okay, well, I think I would agree with Pete. I would love Suicide Squad box. 
Yes. And I want King Shark. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. right. yeah, and you better come with a little Actually, button. The Suicide, with Squad, Suicide Squad box would be at the top of my list as things they will do. Maybe right below an obvious group of Batman. Villains. Unless they would save it for the second wave of this. Maybe. The point being, all our speculation here, at least I am speculating because I'm really excited about this. I love this game. Injustice. And I... Yeah, like the little bit of a glimpse we've gotten of this. I'm like, yes, I'm in. 100%. Mm -hmm. And this one's starting at the level we are at with Marvel United. Meaning, in the core box, you have equipment. Oh, they already you said have, that? Yeah, well, you can see it. It's Aren't like, there. oh, yeah. yeah. The point being that we're not regressing to where Marvel United started, right. very basic characters, very basic villains. You're starting a little more developed. Right, we're starting yeah. at where we are right now. I like that. Yeah. Well, Batman has to have equipment, or else he's. What else has he got? Well, he's a rich cat. You know what I mean? He throws uh, money at the Joker. Ah. I'm a millionaire philanthropist. <laughs> All right. That is, folks, the longest news we've done in a long time. Let's keep going. Well, today we're talking about insects, mm -hmm. our favorite three insects. Welcome to spring. And this is where our beginning conversation started, because we're talking about how insects are horrible and terrible yep. for the most and part. And how they eat your Christmas tree, and I'd say, no. No, there was just, I said, we opened our Christmas time. tree, and there was a lot of cockroaches in the box. And I said. I nearly took the box and hurled it into the backyard. Time to call Krampus. The sun. <laughs> I don't particularly love bugs. I like looking at bugs. Like I like bug farms. And like, if there's a bug thing at a museum, I'll always go look at it because I think that's interesting. Like pinned bugs, kind of. No, thing? that's that's a little grotesque Creepy. for yeah, me. It is you know, like when they have like the the earth and you can see the tunnels and stuff with the bugs. Oh, whoa, 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 I got the you. The Smithsonian has a really cool one with like a giant termite farm yeah. and an ant farm. Hmm. That's neat. That's really funny you say that because I think it's one of my favorite things is actually the pinup of bugs and just like you know, uh, little science offices that have all the, the little, evolution like, of them. Morbid. I love it. Kevin of Curiosities. Ask. Yeah, but I guess I like that stuff. Oh, you're I don't know, for but, sure. but no, I just really <laughs> like the scientific and just like seeing the different variations, having them all pinned up there. I think it's gorgeous. I can tell you my least favorite bug is straight up mosquitoes. I'm going. No, I'm going to go palmetto, uh, palmetto Roaches. cockroach over a mosquito. I don't know what that is. The big, the big giant ones. Oh, they just run away though. Mosquitoes have you actively seen one fly? attack you. Yes, I have been. Yeah, they. That's the first time I, I saw. I went to kill a cockroach and it flew in the air. I was like, they've evolved. Do you like? <laughs> do, do you like? Do you hate cicadas as much as cockroaches? I don't see them. That, okay, they're that's super fair. gross looking. I, I love. They're not my house. Cool. I think they're not my house. All right. Well, anyway, really, right, what are we doing? Cockroach then? on your list. I almost no, put cicadas. Of course not. Am I starting? Yeah. All right. So my number three is going to be uh, a a type of beetle, and that I'm going with the European rhinoceros beetle. Oh, he's cool. Okay. He's cool. I like scarabs and beetles are one of my like categories of They come out your forehead, I see. They do, it. they go under your skin and then come forth and then you're a mummy and then you got a sequel with Jed Lee. What are you talking um. about? Is this a movie? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. The mummy. Okay. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no idea what you're that talking about. That <laughs> 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 no idea. Uh, anyway, European rhinoceros beetle. It's the big fella with the big whoop, yeah, thing the on his horn, face. Yeah, yeah, he's cool. Oh, yeah, I know. He's you feel about. those guys. He's really cool. And they fight. Um, they, yeah, they're just they're neat cool. looking. I, I like the bugs that look like they're armor plated. And the beetles, a lot of the different kinds of beetles have that cool, like, tanky look. Yeah. I like them, you know? Um, so I knew I was going to put some kind of scarab, and I just kind of was 
going down a rabbit hole trying to figure out which one. They have these other scarabs. They kind of look like the, the rhinoceros guy, but they're even more, they got even more equipment. And they're enormous. Yeah. They're way bigger. I was like, no, that dude is too scary. <laughs> he like, I, I would be frightened of him. You know what I mean? I wanted to look cool and be like, oh, you're, you're awesome, dude. But I'm not terrified of you. They have some that were really big and they looked just scary. Um, so I'm going with this guy. European Rhino Beetle. My number three. All right, my number three is the only insect that knows and worships God, the praying mantis. <laughs> no, I just, no, here's the thing. I like praying mantis. I don't know why. I just every time someone says, there's a praying mantis, I'm like, let me see it. Is it praying as in no, PR? Just, is that why it's called praying yeah, mantis? It's called it because it looks like the yeah. arms are praying Oh, it mantis. is? Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was spelled yeah. like an E. There's two things everyone uh -huh. talks about that. They pray and the... Wide Lights kill the males, and that's like the subject of 800 comic yeah. strips, yeah, you yeah. know. Right, right, Gary right. Larson and Farside did that sort of thing. Yeah. Got it, I, got it. I don't know about that. I've only ever seen one praying mantis at a time, and so it would be like, I found one, because it's like, you know, they're hard to see. Yeah. But mm -hmm. when you just, they just looked at them, I was like, that's a cool bug. <gasps> I, I just think they look cool. one. You forgot about what? Oh. You forgot you what? Know, I forgot, no, about a bug. I probably, the walking, the, the stick? walking sticks. You said, yeah. I thought about that just like, oh, I said I the praying mantis. Sticks. But the walking stick is a little yeah. creepier to me. Oh, that, I love them because they just like hide in there. and they're. Oh, I love yeah, walking sticks. That's terrifying sticks. about Why? the hiding stuff. All right. Do your number they're three. They're planning. Okay, that's that probably would have been. They're plotting. They think. Yes. Bugs think. I love them. Oh, okay. That probably would have been my number three had I thought of did it. Did I call but female mantises wives? Yes, I did. You did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. All of them. They're all married. <laughs> I did. Uh, mine's a beetle as well. I went. I thought about the rhinoceros beetle, but I actually went dung beetle instead. I'm, I what? love Should watching I the dung beetles just because they're so strong. They do love They are so strong. Here we no. go, fellas. I don't, I don't know. Roll if, this poop. I don't know if they are the strongest animal, like with their size ratio, but I know they're up there. Yeah. Um, and I just love they just everything they can carry and push and do, and it's just and they, they clean up. They help us. I just, I I'm fascinated, like well, scientifically a lot of these clean by. Clean up and help us, I suppose. I know, no, but I mean they do it like in feces. Um, I, I just I'm just fascinated by them scientifically. I just find them very interesting to learn about and watch them them work so yes they're, I'm just saying they're very beetle. strong they can lift many things but they choose to lift poop when they could be lifting other things <laughs> right nice rock they choose to gems. clean up and help with decomposition and and keeping the earth clean I, maybe I like they just like beetles. being ankle deep in poop you know what my dung beetle Against my pick rhino? Up your rhino beetle and oh, throw him out of the tree. Oh, no. You're going to get speared. No right, two? way. Ooh, my number no. two is a shotgun for my <laughs> rhino beetle. <laughs> my, number two, my number two is one that y'all should have put on your list. Walking stick. Oh, really? <laughs> Absolutely. Is it really? Oh, I'm so mad. I forgot Walking about it. Walking stick is all, it's the so first cool. one I thought of. It's the very I, first thing I wrote. I'm so sad. There were two I, I, I thought of immediately. Yeah. My man who looks like a stick and my other man who looks like a leaf. Are you kidding me? Those are the two wow. coolest insects. I completely forgot. I did not put the leaf guy. Get out of here. You're just a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but the stick guy. They're so cool. He's just hanging out on a stick. He will be on a stick, a stick, looking like a stick. Yeah. You can walk right by him. He's like, mm mm, not today, Satan. You stole He's, that from me. Look at you. You, you, don't, you didn't come up with you that. Come I didn't come Satan, up with that, okay? but I say you it. Come up you with never a lot said of evil it. Things. You didn't invent Satan. I didn't come Satan. up with Satan, no, but. Okay, calm down. <laughs> the walking stick came up with that. <laughs> All right, my number two is the least scary bug in the world, I think. And that's the ladybug. Ladybug. Oh. I love ladybugs. Oh, I despise ladybugs. I buy them oh, by I the thousands them. sometimes. <gasps> you yes, buy them? Yeah, why not? Yeah. I kill every ladybug I see. Okay, why? Now you're wait, hold on. Really are you releasing spiders? <laughs> I oh, hate ladybugs. Ladybugs. Why? Why? They this? attack you. Have you ever, have you ever been attacked by a swarm of ladybugs? No. I have. It's a thing. It's terrifying. I hate it. They get in your house. You can't get rid of them. They're they're awful. Anyway, they I the, hate they, they ladybugs. They kill the bad little bugs. I buy them by a thousand right. and release them in the backyard. It's, yeah. Because they kill the oh. other little insects and stuff, but they're also cute. Is there a, is there a different ladybug where we're from, Roy? That is that the problem? 
I know. It's just because they're not down here like that. Look what Loopy says. One ladybug can eat up to 5,000 insects in his lifetime. Yeah, you know yeah. what? Not if it's dead. And they shouldn't be in my Ladybugs house. are amazing. No, they what are, are they, they swarm. They but you swarm. But you want to like release spiders. Like if you find a spider in the house, you're like, ladybugs. oh, let me save it and take it outside. Yeah. And if you see ladybugs, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> they are coming at you. Uh. Ladybugs swarm up and they plot and then they attack you. And then they take you out and you run outside and they're like, no. Up and they go inside, right, well, and then you're stuck Camille's outside. Ruining my thing, but ladybugs are awful. Yes, they sell ladybugs. You can buy them on Amazon. They, they people buy them because they help your crops. That, that's yeah. what they do. You put them on like your orange They're trees great. or whatever. Mike Heller knows ladybugs are from the devil. Oh my goodness, they're wow. he knows. Oh, Mike Heller ladybug. knows what's up. Oh my goodness. Right, what's your number two? Wait, is it uh, me? Oh, it's no, her. it's me. Bees. Oh, I love bees. Bees well, make me very happy. Here. Like honeybees. Or well, bumblebees. There's also bumblebee. Pick one. Either one. Nah. No, but probably, if I had to pick okay. both, probably bumblebees. I just find they're just chonky and cute. Like the tuna. But what? No, like bumblebee the tuna. tuna? Yes, yeah. So the you've been attacked tuna. by ladybugs, but you've never been stung by a bee. No, they crawl on you there, and only if you threaten them. Ladybugs are not hunting humans. <laughs> oh, they they do. Do. It makes the ladybugs what? sound like they they're on their like, sharpening spear. What? I don't understand. You step outside, where they're like, lived? "Where are you going they today? Are. Where, where are you going today? They're so bad." Get back in the house. They do. They chase you out, and then they go inside. <laughs> Can you try They're harmless. They're harmless. They are not. Oh, All right, my okay, goodness. Okay, so back to the You museum. need to go visit the South, not Florida. No, thanks. Not South. All right, my number two are bees. I love them. Oh, my goodness. Uh, They're good. All right, what's your number one? My number one. Where's my number one? My goodness. Okay, so my number one is this little bug that... We had everywhere when I was growing up in Cuba, and oh. I looked it up. Is it Rolly Poly? No. No, those are cute, though. I like that. <laughs> They're good. Uh, no, it's, um, so I looked up what it's called, and the internet will tell you it's a firefly. It's not a firefly. It is, because a firefly, which I've never seen in my life, it's booty butt is what lights up. Yes. Yeah, this is a bug that has on its head two little green spots, and they light up. What so, is it? So there's a few different names for what I could find. Uh, Pyrophorus is one, or a click beetle. Where, do you, where have you seen these? In person, with my eyes. Okay, Florida, Cuba, Texas. Yeah, in Florida you can find them. They're not as prevalent, okay. but in Cuba they're like everywhere. Okay, because I've never seen We any. found some in our backyard. I... So there's these little guys. Their little headlights up. They have two little green dots that light up. Also, you grab him, and you put him on his back... Then he goes, his little head goes, mm, click, and he jumps up off the table and tries to land right side up. And I love these. If he does it, he lands on his back again and, and he does, does it, it again. again. Mm, and like, he like spring, and like, he like loads his neck and then like, oh my releases gosh, himself I and jumps these. up. So it's called Cocuyo in, in Spanish. Uh, and again, it's Pyrophorus or Click Beetle or something like that. Um, and again, it's kind of, it glows in the dark, so you can grab him and he lights up and all that. You can, you know, he flies, they fly. If you squish him and, like, rub him on your clothes, then do you glow? No, I've never oh, okay. killed ones, but they, oh, okay. I don't think so because the, it's not like a, it's not a bulbous area of yeah. liquid or whatever. It's okay. just like something beneath their little dome. <sighs> so, that up. sounds really sad, so no, I don't know. Mm. But anyway, it's not a firefly, it's a different little thing, and it's... Firefly is like such a nostalgic or bug snap for me. Beetle. Or lightning bug. I just as a kid just going out and catching those at night. Fireflies? Yeah. I've never seen a firefly, I think. So Okay. I've never seen a firefly. No, I don't think I've ever seen one in person. My number one is the prettiest bug of all. And that is the butterfly. Or Which one? The Which monarch. one you have to pick? Uh huh. <laughs> Probably the monarch. Really? Which I think one? the monarch is <laughs> yeah, King Monarch. I don't know. I don't even know what Which it was. King Monarch? Uh, King Monarch of South Dakota. I don't King know. King Monarch the third of Swiss. I like butterflies. Oh, if there's a butterfly farm, there's actually one that's like 50 miles north of us. I think there's a butterfly. There is. Yeah. Uh, I've not been to that West one yet. As well, I haven't been to that. I went to the one. I, no, I didn't go to one at Key West. I went and bought butterfly Lady stuff bugs. there because we were almost done. With the day, but I'm next time I go to Key West, I'm going to that because I yeah. really like those. Yeah. If they have one at a zoo, they get big or somewhere, too, right? and like you walk in and they just land on you. And yeah. normally, if bugs are landing on me, I'm like, that's like terrible. But yeah. butterflies yeah. are okay. That's so. interesting. That's cool. That's cool. 
My number one is lightning bugs. I love lightning bugs so much. I love everything about them. I've oh, my, like one of my just so like much nostalgia. Them and wearing them. Yeah. Okay, I still have. I, I just say I still horrible. have nightmares about that. As a kid, it's like the thing to do is you take That's the lightning true. bug and you like put it on your shoestring. So then your shoes like light up at night and you're so cool. And then as an adult, you have nightmares and feel bad about it. That's but as a crazy. kid, like, really you asked me, have you ever squished <laughs> one and worn it? I'm like, no. <laughs> What am I? I what like I said, I still feel well, bad about it. You're living it. in a different post-apocalyptic world. He definitely <laughs> killed some and squished them on the pavements, and it leaves like a glowing smear. Yeah. What or you could like, you know, like, yeah, or she was like, or you, I get you. Children. You did it on the ground, at least. She was marking herself with it. She I was like, did. I said, like, I She was like going regret. like full furious. I'm not it. corpses of my enemies. I'm, I'm ah, not arguing with you. I, they'll see so, me. Do so you call coming. them lightning bugs? We call them lightning bugs. Over fireflies. That's yeah. what we call them. Yeah, I think it's a regional thing, isn't it? It is. So. They're called different all over America. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And so I know in uh, Tennessee, they're, they'll have the lightning bug, like, festivals because they all get in sync in, in like mating season and so you'll go out you know into the smokies um, at, at night at, at dusk and you just sit real quietly and it's, it's just like instantly they all kind of like come up and go on and then they just you know what? for like 30 40 minutes there's like big watch parties but then also you got them everyone's got them in their yard I mean you just sit on your porch and there's like lightning bugs everywhere and oh they're I, I you love put them, them in so a jar much. you get a lot of them in yeah. a jar yeah, and they all light up together they make me so happy I love them well, there you go, folks. Those are our three favorite insects. Let us know yours in the comments. We'll do arachnids never. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. So uh, anyway, let's keep going. Hey, folks, welcome back to another Gateway Corner. Now, usually on Gateway Corner, we take a look at games that would be great to use in a gateway type situation. But this week, we're going to have to take a little bit of jaunt into unknown territory and talk about a game that I thought would be a great gateway game, but it actually turned out to backfire on me. We're going to be talking about Imperial Miners. As we're getting down to the table, as you can see, Imperial Miners is a great looking game. That's the first thing that kind of sets it off as being a possible great gateway experience because uh, games that have a great table appeal usually do pretty well in gateway situations because it latches onto that theme and it helps people to really um, endear themselves to the game just because of how aesthetic it is. Now, You'll take a look at the basic mechanic is you're just going to be taking a card out of your hand, placing it into your tableau. This one cost me a couple of bucks, so I'd have to do that and spend a couple bucks to do that. And then I'm just going to be chaining up uh, the cards, uh, firing off these different or activating these different uh, rooms in your mind. And that doesn't seem like a very difficult thing. Uh, but you're also going to be traveling up all of these different technology tracks uh, to score different points, gain more cards, do different things throughout the course. And all of that is pretty simple. But when you start converging all of the different texts that are on the different cards, all of the different things that are on all of these different tracks, all of the different things that could happen on uh, the event cards throughout the course of the game, this really becomes, unfortunately, a little daunting for new gamers. Now, at the last board game event that we hosted, I really thought that this was going to be a great experience. I had five people that um, looked like they were pretty savvy on games, so I wasn't too uh, sure that it was going to be an actual gateway experience, but I never met these people before, and I really thought that Imperial Miners would be a great way to kind of break the ice and uh, get to know these guys a little bit better. What really happened though is that there were a lot of there was a lot of confusion about all of the different texts and it was even though I was doing the best that I could possibly do to try to explain the different things uh, the different players were getting hung up on a lot of the different nuances that a lot of these different cards that has that have a lot of text on them and it was a little daunting for them. Now, we still had a great time learning how to play the game. We still had a, a great time in general, 
But even later on that evening, one of the guys that uh, uh, I was teaching Nard to uh, was one of the guys that was playing Imperial Miners, and he said, now, this is a great game. Not so sure about that one that we played earlier. I think Imperial Miners is a great game, don't get me wrong, but I think you might want to hold off using it in a gateway experience because it really is a great game. I just don't think it does that well with gateway situations. So that's Gateway Corner for today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. All right, just a quick topic today because we're running late as it is. Um, so, to all the toys here. So, you back a Kickstarter, yep. and yes, it I comes do. with the bling-bling. The yep, bling, yep. bling. I want that bling-bling. So, I'm just here to talk about what of the bling-bling attracts you. So, there's mm -hmm. various things. I'm giving to you. You guys tell me what you think of them. Okay? Go. Yep. Go. So, the big one that lots of Kickstarters have is metal coins. Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. Yes. 100%. Yes. Number I one. All. Yes. Everything yep. else is lesser Give than. Give me two. <laughs> really? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, play mat. Depends. Am I picking cards up off of it? Am I, am I consistently picking cards up off the board? Yes, absolutely, because then you can actually get it up. I'm kind of... 40%. I'm slowing on play mats because the storage from the bear... I mean, we yeah. have our storage solution at Dice Tower, and even that's not great, right? We do it because that's mm. what we have. Mm. Right. Like, at home, people use pants hangers or wine racks. I don't know. So after a while, I get... The playmat needs to be pretty amazing. I also find it like here's the board game. I didn't bring the mat. You know it what I mean? It needs to. It, I feel like I'm with you, Lindsay. I think 40% is a good way to put it. I feel like it needs to increase or better the experience. If there's cards now or I'm moving around a lot, something like like moving around a lot of miniatures, something like that, um, it needs to increase or make better the experience of the game. And then it's, it's worth it. But I'm definitely picky with them. Yeah, for me, it's definitely card game with no board, and you're giving me a, a play mat that helps. More like 90%. Yeah. Board game where you gave me an alternate to the board that's on neoprene, 10%. No, see, I, I get For me, it, like, you know what I mean? I got the board already, and guess what? The board fits in the box. I'm very, like, I'm yeah. pretty not interested if it's just an alternate to what's already in the game. I think I it really that. depends. There's there's a lot that, um, like, for example, I just got the um, Robinson Crusoe one, and I'm picking those cards up a lot, and I'm turning them over, and like, oh, we built that, pick it up, turn it over. Like, any type of card manipulation on a board, I mean, even if it's a one-to-one -one the same, I, I sure. want it, yeah. All right, what about uh, upgraded pieces? Depends. What are they like coming resources. from going to? Like cardboard to plastic, something yes. like that? Is that what you're saying? Well, so I mean, start upgraded, at cardboard. Yeah. Okay. Almost always, yes. This is my number yeah. one over yeah. coins. Yep. Uh -huh. Because coins, there's a lot of coins, and I like chunky coins, but I like having chunky resources in general. They're easier to, for me to see, and this, yep. for some reason it makes the game feel better. I agree with that. It differentiates it a lot, yeah. yeah right. I agree. Art book or art prints? No. Hard pass. Never. I've never gotten Negative one, never 10%. kept one. I've, oh, I have gotten one, but I've never kept it. Anything. Okay, I yeah. never want the art book. Because to me, a book is useless. Can I'm, I'm <laughs> somebody please just quote him on that? Okay. <laughs> to me, a book is useless. Tom Vassell. I'll say, like, ah. uh, the only time I've been tempted by it on the book is if I'm going to paint the miniatures just for more art and concept art and things like that just to get the colors from. But then I never use it. I just paint it once, and then I just have this book. So, no, it's it's... Hard. Uh, it's hard okay. pass. I don't even. I thought I would use it for that, and I didn't. So. But I do like. It depends. If I really like the art, the art prints are interesting to me because I'll put them up on my walls. Sure. I can't do that with a book. The book sits on a shelf that someone will pull off and be like, "What's this? An art book?" And I go, "Oh." And they're trying to think how soon putting it back on the shelf is polite. <laughs> God, oh, okay. Like, yeah. I, I'll look through a few pages. That's. That's enough. enough. Where's your nearest trash can? Ooh, Josh, that's interesting. Put it on a shirt. Yep. If that was one, get a shirt of a piece of art from the game. No, that, that, that would be more too many interesting. Other meant the, a book is useless. <laughs> oh. Put that on oh, a shirt. Oh, put that on a shirt. Okay, well, I want <laughs> I the will board say, game though, shirt, yeah. I like your idea where you're taking this, taking, if, instead of selling me the art print or the art book, sell me a shirt with some artwork. Uh huh. But there's too many other implications that come with that. Do your shirts run big or small? Are they scratchy? Is it a good shirt? There's too much other stuff besides a piece of artwork on a shirt. I think usually, but I think if it's you're buying it for the artwork, 
for me, I'm definitely more flexible on those things. Yeah. You know, I like um, high quality shirts or one that has a image that I really like on it, something like that. I won't wear a shirt or I should say I'll rarely wear a shirt that looks cool and it's not comfortable. I'm just not going to do it. Well, it has to be at least comfortable, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but I'll always err on the side of getting a larger one. Box that holds everything. <sighs> That's hard. I'm I'm definitely waffling on that one. I'm, I am slowly trending towards the negative on that. The longer I am a gamer, yeah. the more I'm like getting farther and farther away from that. Getting farther and farther away from. Oh, and here's another expansion right. that you fit in this big box. And every time you think about playing that game, you get a little sadder inside. And I'm wondering. I mean, we've seen this with like. The Everdell big box. Right. The whatever. Like, more and more big boxes that hold everything. Keep making it harder to get that thing right. to the table. I think it's actually a it's, detriment oftentimes to getting that game played. But is the issue there the box that fits everything or so many expansions coming out at once well, that there's the instant need for the box that fits everything? That's a problem. Because that's my thing. It was like, I want the box that fits everything I want. If I have a game, I want it in one box. That's fair. You know. Yeah. Meaning I don't need 15 expansions sure. right off the bat. I'm hoping to not ever need the box because right. I'm not going to have those expansions, ideally. Yeah, no. Plushy. No. They're just dog toys. It's an expensive dog toy. They really are dog toys. Yep. <laughs> I'll go to... My son has to be careful with his room to keep the stuffed animals. Right. The dogs are... They, they, they love stuffed they animals. They love them. I just go to Goodwill. Okay. I'm like, well, big dogs do yeah. anyway. Yeah, no, okay. plushies I'm, are very low on my list. I got one. A, a plushie? No, no, I oh. got a thing to, to throw oh. out. Oh. Keychain. No. Foreteller narration. Oh, that's so tempting. Or some kind of narration. Okay, so would you put soundtrack in that same thing? I'm probably yeah, yeah, more in sure, soundtrack okay. than the foreteller. Um, but either one, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's, that's a high It depends one for on me. if I'm playing it solo or not. Oh, interesting. Because if I'm playing it solo, I don't want to hear the foreteller. I, I can Agreed. read faster. Agreed. And just I'm playing the game faster. Okay, fair. But it's better than anybody at the. If, even if I was playing with Eric Summer, I'm still using. I don't want to hear him talk. Right. Mm -mm, that's the main no. thing. You're to um, be seen, not heard. <laughs> no, I. Okay, that's a good distinction. I like that. Solo, no. It's, it almost feels a little self-serving. Read to me, just to me alone. Yeah. But to build camaraderie and that sort of community around the table, then yes, I do like the narration and they're really doing good job, you know, good job yeah. with that stuff lately. I think anything that sells you on that atmosphere and that theme and everything, like, yes, I love it, especially the soundtrack, the soundtrack in the background. I'm not big on the soundtrack, but the, oh. the reading, if it's a uh, uh, text-heavy game. And I think that's why I like maybe the soundtracks over Foreteller is because it is the ambiance. Even when you're down there and you're doing your thing and you're going at it, you're still f hearing it around you, whereas Foreteller is usually just when it's a reading passage and then it goes back to quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I want that whole experience. I'm like, yeah. What okay. about themed card sleeves? Only if the game needs them. You know what I mean? I, so most games I don't think need sleeves, but I know people like sleeves. I think I'm usually okay with just clear on both sides. Right. I, I don't I don't like the solid color on the back and then the clear front. I, I actively dislike those. Right, okay. um, so I like full full clear. Full clear. If they are themed, I'm fine with that. I, I think I'm pretty indifferent. Right. They've got to be a really good deal to get it with it. Um, otherwise, I'll just go with just then the old with, sleeve. Yeah, with the sleeve if it kings. Needs that I, if, if, and again, if it needs sleeves, I'm definitely trending more towards being more picky on what I sleeve. So it has to be a high shuffle game. But I'm shuffling a lot then. Yeah. Uh, someone mentioned in the comments cloth bags to put components in. That's interesting. No, I I've liked that. that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on how big the bag is. I hate little bags. You know, you really like it in planted. I so probably like you. it as much as I would like. They saved me the trouble of going and getting a plastic bag. That's about it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Uh, no, I remember. I thought you just, like, when the, the first time we played oh, that, you said, nice. like, it's I'm just really saying, we're talking nice. about add-ons. Oh, they don't add sell that any other way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see. It doesn't come without. And same with, like, let's go to Japan. Did that one come with the cloth ones, or I was that know. an upgrade? That was, and that's that the was problem. a nice set. So that's the thing. It's like, I don't think it's worth it, but then every time I've seen it, it's been, ooh, this is nice. No, so I don't right. know. I Maybe like I do like, I like it more, more than, than I thought. I like more than that. It's also like, I'm purple player. 
There's the purple sure. bag. I'd be so throwing bad. this yes. in for free. Sure, why not? They're nice unless they're actively like scratchy or feel bad or something, or not big enough. That's just annoying. But I'm not gonna add on baggies for the bits when I can just zip zip lock them. See, or something, I hate you know plastic I mean? baggies though. Like I really dislike plastic. That's why I like inserts so much is because I despise, actively dislike plastic bags oh, and games for components. And so I think I would be more tempted if it's a game. I would need to know that I like the game and want the game, which means I probably wouldn't do it on Kickstarter. But if it's an upgrade at like a booth at Essen or something like that, I'm likely to get it. Do you like bins more than plastic bags? You'll always yes. default to that? Oh, yeah. I, I really don't Come like plastic now. bags. Come on. Bins. Bins are amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, I like bins too. They they can be very wasteful when it comes to space. That's the tricky part. If something, if you need all the room in that box, bags are the way to go. Right. I mean, it's a functional thing, yeah. of course. So I'm not saying I don't have them in my games. I do. I just I do not like them. Every time I have to put, take the game out or put it away, I just I I, I don't like them at all. There's also custom inserts. Somebody was talking about. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. How do you guys feel about that? If a company is offering a custom insert. As an extra thing, it's almost always included in, so I just, that's, it is what it is. It's very rarely its own unique thing. It, at that point, it's its own Kickstarter. Sometimes we'll see or a company yeah, that has, yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah. And then the last thing is just all that extra, I don't know how else to describe it, but garbage. Like I, was, I said it. earlier, like the keychains and coasters and just stuff they're doing and they're slapping the logo of the game on it somehow. I always feel like that stuff is just extra stuff if you want to get it to support the game company i mean because we make that stuff for dice tower right it seems right? more like a fundraiser thing than yeah, yeah. that's fine it's just that i will never pick any of that stuff well the problem I is to upgrade the game the problem is if i'm backing a game that's most of the time if i'm backing a game on kickstarter i'm also getting i don't know coasters and keychains or whatever i don't know if i'm a fan of that game right yet. yeah i'm assuming i'm a fan of that game i'm hoping i'll like that game but I don't actually know that. Now, if you're making coasters and keychains and whatever, whatever, and a shirt, what have you, for a game I know I like, then yeah, maybe, if I want to celebrate my love for that thing. But as included in a game, that maybe I'll get the game and play it and say, like, ah, oh, it's okay. It's like, I enjoyed it. It's like a solid 7 out of 10. It's not going to be a game I keep for a while. What am I supposed to do with all this stuff? Or it's a cool piece of art from the game. Something sure. like that, you know, because I know I, that we each have a couple of those on our desks, you know, where right, it's like, right. that game, I don't remember what game it is, but I really like that piece of art, you know. So I think something like that it goes back to the shirt discussion we had, you know, a piece of art on the shirt. Right. Well, there you go, folks. All the toys. And wow, this was a long episode. But we'll it's be long. back in a few hours to continue on the Four Coins campaign. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you then. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Camilla. Have fun with the toys. The metal and bugs. coins. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you like this review or whatever you just watched, wasn't it amazing? Uh, check out our channel, Dice Tower. Uh, we have all kinds of things. We review games, we do top tens, we play games live. It's all about board games, but especially the people who play them. Check out Dice Tower YouTube channel.